Welcome to this episode of the Golf Blabcast, brought to you by the team at Network and Golf. <laughs> So, hey, are we are we recording? Yes. So I just started recording. So bring it on, Scott. Do the introduction. Network and golf. Oh Woo! man, we haven't even worked out an introduction yet. So this is Network and Golf. This is our first Blabcast uh, as Network and Golf. Both Colleen and I are, I guess you could say, we're veterans of Blab, but um, we're here for a different purpose. Wednesday nights at nine and Fridays at noon, right? And uh, we're talking golf and how it relates to business and um, anything golf related. So today's topic is Tiger Woods turns 40 and can he make a comeback? Can he can he compete with Jordan Spieth and Jason Day and uh, Rory McIlroy and all these other young guys? And um, who is Paige Spiernak? Uh, she's popping up everywhere all over social media especially. So those are, the, those are the primary topics today, but we may talk about a few other things, right, Colleen? You probably have a long two. list. One or two. Hey, so let's talk about Tiger Woods, right? This guy turned 40. Who else? I thought he was like 50. He's been around so long, right? Like, come on, Tiger Woods. Like, are, are, we, are we done with him yet? I, I don't think we are. I, I don't think we've heard the last of Tiger Woods, um, but I did see something something interesting today. When Tiger Woods start, went pro, the number one golfer in the world was 40. Now that he's 40, the number one golfer in the world is 22, I think, Jordan Spieth. Really? And, you know, he's so amazing. But, you know, like, keep in mind, Tiger Woods, right, he was the youngest to win the Masters. He won with the highest points, by 17 points. I don't even know if that's even going to beat yet, right? Because he still hold the record. And then he went he back. Still holds the record. When he the second time he won, he had something like a 15 point spread. I mean, just one hold up. He was the um, fifth and youngest player to win a career Grand Slam in all four majors. I mean, I I mean, come on, there, there's been nobody that we can remember in our you know in the last 20 years who had those results, right? Not at that age. So 40 no, but, accomplishments, and it feels like a lifetime of accomplishments. Like, you know, this is Arnold Palmer 20 years yeah. earlier. I think the difference now is when when Tiger Woods first came on the, on the scene, there was nobody like him. There was nobody who could drive the ball like him. Nobody could play the game like he can. Now we had all these kids that looked up to Tiger Woods as he was playing, and now they play at his level. So now the, the field is is even um, more so than it was when he started. That's that's my opinion. You know what's what's wild though is this is you know remember you know when they used to say that you can never run a four, a five minute mile right? Do you remember like way back when was it five minute or four mile? I can't remember. Four minute. But, yeah. I think there was a movie about that. A four minute mile until somebody broke it, and when somebody ran that first four minute mile, and all these people started breaking it. But you know, I look at um. You know, we we live in this community that's very, um, you know, it's about what your kids doing and what sports are they in, and and there's a lot of competition really early on. So if they're not playing soccer by five o'clock, your kid's five five years old. Five o'clock. He calls after five o'clock here. But um, if they're not playing soccer by five o'clock, they're behind. So do you think that the same thing kind of applies now? Like I think. Athletes are getting younger and younger. They're getting pushed into it earlier by their parents than we were. That's true. My son is five, and he is playing baseball, soccer, and basketball. And we've talked about getting him into golf. It's a little more challenging uh, because there's not really any organized golf uh, in my area. But, um, you know, we've talked about it. And he's playing three competitive sports in in organized leagues right now so at five at five, five 
crazy. Austin, have you, do you play sports? Do you play sports um, yes, I play golf. I'm an amateur, but I'm not really good at it. <laughs> that's all right. Join the club. Isn't that, there's like a handful of people, and that's why we love to um, talk about I used to people play football like, back in the day when I was little, but when I was in school, but not like on a football team because I was scared I was going to get injured. So I was I just a football manager on the football team. <laughs> oh, that's all. So, you know, like when I was, and you know, I'm a little older than Tiger Woods, right? I don't like to admit that very often. Like a couple I days, maybe. Lost, right? <laughs> but. You know, like when I was, and I was an athlete, you know, I thought I was going to school on scholarships. I mean, I was pretty active, but we didn't start till middle school. And it was, if it wasn't school run, you didn't really, you know, there was a little league, but beyond li little league, there was really nothing for kids. You, you had to work hard to go find it in my neighborhood, at least. Yeah, and I think I, I started playing sports in middle school, if I remember correctly. And I started before my sophomore year of high school. I stopped before my sophomore year of school because I had the mono. So they said no more football. I never played golf in school, though. So let's kind of talk about, like, where golf is going. You know, this whole, this whole industry, right? And we, we work with a lot of country clubs with Small Business USA and Networking Golf. And we're working with a lot of country clubs. And everybody's talking about the same thing. Millennials, 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 right? You look at the PGA and it's all about how do we get younger people golfing right now. It's kind of become this old man's sport or old woman's sport, whatever you want to call it. But you look at, have you guys seen Scratch TV? I saw that you shared that. Um, I did not have a chance to look at it yet. So what is that about? So this is cool. This is the PGA sponsors it. They sponsor a couple other cool things for for younger people. Just really to get people excited about golf that are younger. And it's just the demographic. It's a website. It's tons of video. But it's, it really talks to the younger demographic. Like a couple weeks ago, it had all of like the top golfers that were under 30. And they had their favorite group. You know? It's just, you know, they'll have golf tips. They'll have golf news i mean it's really very very cool website but it's i think it's if you look at it it's different than anything we've ever seen presented by the pga before you know so when we see like what is the pga doing they're out there trying to get you know they're making a big deal about jordan spike right i mean he's you can't turn on the tv without seeing him and i think right now it's a numbers game they're looking at you know how is where is the game of golf going if we don't have a lot more people joining us, right? I agree. And actually, there is a blog post on our website, networkinggolf.com, uh, that challenges the country club problems in the United States. And interestingly enough, it's a problem in the United States, not necessarily around the world. As in, in fact, China is actually has a growing golf economy. Um, but, yeah, if you go to networkandgolf.com, we have a blog post, uh, why are country clubs and golf courses losing their appeal? And a lot of that is the millennials and even the, uh, Generation X, um, you know, whether it's they don't have the time to be on the golf course or they don't want to spend the money to join a country club. There's a lot of different reasons it could be, and you can't really put your finger on one reason. But it is a declining industry in the United States, and it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, well, we're addressing it, all right. That's right. We are. <laughs> we, we are. Got we're coming that. for you. We got that covered. Hey, but I, I love, like, you know, you look at Jordan Spieth, and he's... Is it Spieth or Spieth? I'm, have I been saying it wrong all this time? No, I think you're right, Spieth. Uh, but you look at him, and he's on the news all the time, publicized. Yep. And then you look at Paige Spiranak, and if she is not being... Funded, run, managed, organized by the PGA. I mean, they're just stupid. This girl is mm -hmm. adorable. She's sexy. She's sweet. Like, they, you know, if they're not behind her rise to fame, I'd be shocked. But, you know, if they're not, boy, they're lucky as all get out. This girl is adorable. She's got a big – did you see her? She just did – um. What baseball? It's Padre Stadium, I think it was last week. I, no, I think it was Chica Chicago, maybe. Was Chicago? I could be wrong. Um, although it's probably pretty cold in Chicago. Yeah, but I saw, she's, I saw the she's still likable, right? She is. She is. She's definitely is. Um, <laughs> if you go to her, 
Some, what? What were you saying? You know, my, my wife might see this, you know. <laughs> I was getting asked all kinds of questions on Christmas. I hear you have a podcast. What is that about? Oh, that's um, funny. So well, this we can is talk a new about Emiliano Grillo if you want. That makes you more comfortable because he's a little hottie from Argentina. Oh, yeah? He's like the, uh, you know, he's the up and coming. He's like tearing up Europe right now, but he's a little 22-year-old hottie from... Um, from Argentina, and, you know, so what the men can look at in Paige Spiranak, the, the ladies, you know, we have Emiliano Grillo, he's adorable. But I think you, you look at what's going on here in the golf world, it's about putting, you know, it's really marketing, right? They're marketing to the young right now, and they need to be. They need to be. I mean, we're working with country clubs, and they're saying we need Generation X, but we have to be worried about millennials. Yes, they they do, but I think it start it might start with Generation X, because there's a little bit of a overlap there, and I think if you get one, you get the other. Um, yeah. And yeah, with absolutely. Paige, the the thing with Paige Spiranak, hey, Brittany's joining us. Um, Paige Spiranak is all over social media. Her her uh, Instagram page is is insane. Um, she's just blown up all over social media in in a very short period of time. Uh, well, I think it's she's selfies, already in, right? Yeah, it's the selfies. I think she's but a lot of those have golf. <laughs> no, they're great. They're great. Yeah. She so, is a queen of the duck face and might have the longest legs I've ever seen. I I can't I legs, can't yes. deny it. I have some I have some leg and envy. An age envy. I think of, you know she's less than half my age, but she's adorable. How do you not love her, right? She's so cute. <laughs> so, um, so I, I want to ask you a question. I don't know, like, can anybody chime in here? Anybody chime in? But so Emiliano Grillo, right? He's all over the news. He's this young kid. He's tearing up Europe, right? But he's going. He's 22, and they show his bag, right? I think his bag was on Twitter, or Instagram, or something the other day, and he's got this. Big, you know, his head covers this big, floppy, stuffed animal. And uh, somebody asked him, they said, you know, why do you, why do you have this stuffed animal? Here you are in this, you know, the pro tour, and why would you have that? And he goes, it's always worked for me. So I, I don't want to change anything. And so it kind of made me start thinking, like, what's the question? How superstitious are golfers? Like, heck, I know, like, basketball and baseball, right? Aren't they the most superstitious players out there? Yes, baseball for sure. Um, you know, baseball players will wear the same socks. Uh, I think all sports, uh, I would think all athletes are a superstition to a degree. For example, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Jets fan, and I can finally say I'm proud to admit that. Um, and the quarterback didn't shave his beard for the longest time. He had this big, bushy beard. And as soon as he, as soon as they hit a losing streak, he shaved it, and they started winning again. So, and he attributed that to his beard, and I don't know how much of that was serious, but uh, he attributed it to his beard. Um, and I, so I think that all athletes, or a lot of athletes, are superstition, no matter the sport. And, you know, so if, if it works for them, then hey. So what are you superstitious about? <laughs> so the Jets have been winning, and I, <laughs> my son wears a Jets sweater to bed. So <laughs> I've been letting them wear it while they're on a winning streak. Oh, so this kid isn't taking this Jets sweater off until until Just while um, sleeping. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I I really believe that when I watch the Yankees, they win. So if they're like in a slump. I'll all of a sudden start watching baseball games because I think that if I watch them on TV, they're going to win. I mean, then you need to watch 162 games a year. <laughs> no, this is true. This is, who has that time though? Baseball might be the longest sport ever. Which kind of kind of talk? Let's talk about that with golf, right? Yes. I mean, we're talking to a lot of clubs right now. They're saying you have to do three holes, or you have to do three, six, and nine are the magic numbers right now. Like I don't know. Are we going to see? Are we going to see entry on the golf courses at three holes? It just sounds, three sounds crazy, but six, that kind of makes sense to me. Yes, I think six and 12, and there, and there are courses that do just three holes. Um, I did 18 holes 
in July, maybe. And, you know, it's a tough month to do that, to do anything outside. And it took five hours. And I think a lot of Generation X and Millennials spend a lot of time working and a lot of time. And you know, there's a big push now to spend more time with your family. It's unrightfully so. Um, they don't have the five hours to spend on a Saturday at a golf course. And I think that's some of the reason why people are not gravitating towards golf courses. You know what, though? We, and we talk to business owners all the time about this, right? Here is the problem. How much time do you spend having coffee with someone or building a relationship or B&I meetings or all these other things? And you go and do 18 with someone and you know them. You're ready oh, yeah. to do at the end of it. Or you're ready to never see them again. I mean, which is the case, you know, like. I've been on the course with people who all of a sudden, like, they're kicking balls. And I'm like, come on, I, I'm not a great serious player, but don't cheat. I'm bad enough. You don't need to cheat to beat me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, that's the truth. And, and actually, that's another blog post on our site. It talks about um, golf etiquette, the 10 – I'm going to mess up the, the – title but it's the 10 10 golf etiquette tips or something like that and it really tell talks about how you get to know someone on the golf course because you're out there with them for five hours and you see how they they react when the ball hooks into the woods or drops into the sand trap or the water uh so you see their reaction to that and you know if they're pounding the golf club on the on the turf or you know uh, getting in the way of other golfers or screaming when somebody else is swinging uh, you know, this, this is probably somebody you don't want to work with. This is true. This is true. You know, I think if you add up all the time that you spend romancing someone and building a relationship with them and seeing them for coffee or meetings or whatever, it's way more than the four hours you're going to spend playing 18 or, or even, or just hitting the back nine, whatever you decide. But, um, I just think that time is just so different on the golf course. And, and that's what I love about networking golf. It's just, it's such a, great win for people who are in business who want to golf who want to want a reason to golf but more importantly you know there's a there's a statistic it's a pretty well-known statistic right that that business owners that golf and do business on the golf course earn 17 percent more and, and that's a huge number right it is but there's also so many other benefits too to it i mean there's some health benefits i mean as long as you're not hitting the 19th hole every single time you get out there, but there's some health benefits to being out there and vitamin D and, you know, not to sound like, you know, we have some folks that write for us for health and wellness and not, you know, not to sound like you need to do a cleanse and all of a sudden golf is going to solve all your health problems, but, you know, to walk 18 is just being outside, it just feels great. So I, I think even if it doesn't do anything for you physically, it does something for you mentally. Yeah, I would agree. Um, although I probably wouldn't have agreed the day after I golfed 18 holes in July. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, I was at this course once, and we were only doing nine. We, we played nine holes. It was, um, it was a business associate of mine. We were just, you know, we were down the street. We're like, oh, let's just go golf, and let's, you know, it's a beautiful day. Let's get outside. And it was Hopbrook Golf Course in this little town called Naugatuck, Connecticut. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I've heard of it, yes. And um, so we, it's a nine-hole golf course. We get there, and they're like, do you want a cart? And we're like, no, it's nine. Why would we want a cart? <laughs> Everybody's getting carts. We're like, why is everybody getting a cart here? It was crazy. We died. We were so tired. We, it was the hilliest, most aggressive nine holes I had ever been on. And I'm telling you, my body ached after it. I'm like, I'm not in horrible shape. I'm like walking and running and exercising. It was the hardest nine I ever walked. Hey, do you, have you seen those golf boards? Golf boards. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, they're like skateboards with the stick. Oh. Oh, we're, we're talking about them. True just bought those, right? Just yes. Bought golf they bought boards. one of the brands, yep. Yeah. That is uh, like the coolest thing I've ever seen. I got feedback from some golfers that uh, – the, the golf courses are actually charging, so they charge you for the cart rental, and then they charge you an additional fee if you want to use that instead of the golf cart. So you're paying for the golf cart plus another fee to to use the, uh, uh, what do they call it, 
I don't remember what they're calling it, but golf it's the, the yeah, but the golf board, right? I mean, they look fun, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I could, but I could also see, you know, driving into a a lake or off off of a steep hill or something. I could see that happening. <laughs> well, I guess you have to uh, have a controlled situation, right? Oh, for hey, sure. You know, sorry, you got to count on the professional level of of the golfers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, um, and so here the challenge of like doing this call at nine o'clock at night is like it's nine o'clock at night here. Holy moly! I, you know, it's like one of those funny things that you're like, okay, I like ants in my pants. I don't know what to do. I'm not normally working at nine o'clock at night, but this is kind of fun. It's a good way to end the night. You are working at nine o'clock at night. I, can't like stop fidgeting. So okay, last thing for me, I guess. Have you seen the world's largest golf club? No. Okay, it's twenty-two and a half feet. Twenty-two and a half feet long. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So all I want to know is, I see this guy is breaking the Guinness Book of World Record by creating the world's largest golf club. Why? I'm like. That's what I said. That's all I wanted to know. So I got possessed. Like, all I had to do was go and figure out why this guy wanted to do it. Well, it's, uh, he built a golf course. Uh, he built, built one for fun, like, I guess, years ago. And um, what is it? Hook it up to an Iron Byron. Um, I don't know what an Iron Byron is. Yeah, Help me out with that, Nano. Do you know what that is? Kyle, if you want to hop on and explain, feel free. Because we're clueless. So this guy, he did it so he can, um, you got it? Yeah. So he did this so he can, go, like, have this long, because it was just, like, a fun thing to do, and then it kind of got carried away. And now he does it for John Daly for the charity that he runs and supports, which is kind of cool. Hey, Kyle, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Good what are is you? Iron Byron? I'm Colleen, by the way. Nice to meet you. And I'm you. Scott. Hey, Scott? Okay. Yeah, and Iron Byron's just the the swing machine that uh, that they use to um, just swing test golf clubs and stuff. Oh, I have never heard that. So you're in the golf industry, Kyle? I am. I am not. Um, but I uh, I've golfed my whole life, um, and I'm part of the generation that isn't golfing right now. <laughs> um, so what's the secret? What, how do we get everybody in golfing, right? Yeah, so I, um, so I probably started golfing when I was ten or twelve. You know, in two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two, right when Tiger was getting big, and when everybody started golfing. And now, my uh, people my age were either still in school. I'm in grad school, um, or well, a, a lot of us are still in school and and haven't got to the point where we've got jobs where we can, um, like you were saying earlier, free, have free time to, to spend five hours to play around or have the, the money to, because golf's not cheap. Well, you know, and it's funny, I was talking to somebody who is at one of the um, large management companies, and so we do um, just kind of Small Business USA, you know, just started to solve a problem. We, we created this program to solve a problem, and it's, Kind of morphed into networking golf so we're pretty excited about it and scott is a big piece of of making that happen but so we've been working with a lot of big golf companies and um management companies and they said you know one of the challenges with golf from their end is that all these like tea times and play for golf all these apps that are making it affordable are poisonous to the golf industry because they're charging so little now to golf just to get people out there and they don't know how to get the prices back up so it actually makes sense and they balance their books right mm -hmm. so it's like this they're like they don't even like to talk about somebody like tea time because you know they call it poison mm -hmm. which is crazy but it's this balance how do you get people to golf how do you get you got i mean you have these empty courses right but yeah. it's one in seven golf courses closes every year now how how crazy is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, the numbers are so way too high. One one of my uh, good friends that uh, that I've golfed with my whole life uh, manages golf course now, so I, I get to hear all about how yeah it's it's terrible, and I'm I'm optimistic that it'll it, like it's gotta 
because I know once I'm done with school, I'm going to find a golf course and start golfing again. And there's, I, I, there just has to be a ton of people like me who are just in school who, who grew up in the Tiger age and um, love golf and are just, just don't have the time for it now that are going to get back into it. I, I don't see it. I don't know if it'll ever get back to that way again, but um, Jordan Spieth's a good start anyways. Yeah, he is, right? He's fun. He's fun. Well, you got to have, you got to love seeing this kid just kind of tear it up like this, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's so fun to watch. I mean, even I caught him, like, I remember it was, this guy was, I don't know, six months ago or however long ago, it seems forever. But um, I it just, I didn't even know who he was. And all of a sudden he's on TV and people are talking about him and putting on the Masters. And, and I was all, you know, you just get hooked. You're like, okay, is this because we, I think we need and want another Tiger Woods, right? Yes. I mean, Tiger Woods kind of crashed and burned or maybe just crashed and burned women. I can't really decide what it is. But, you know, there's – we need a new Tiger Woods. We need a new face of golf. And I, Whether I, can't see, or, I can't see that ever happening again, you know. I mean, that was just on a whole different level, Tiger. Though. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that was something we were talking about earlier is that he just dominated – in his time because nobody was at his level. Now you have a lot of kids who are playing at his level, but they're all competitive with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's who's going to yeah. take it to the next level now. Mm-hmm. So are there more great competitors or are they, are they just not at the level? They're all I think they play to Tiger Woods level when Tiger Woods was in his prime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to, so, Kyle, are you superstitious? I was thinking about that, too. That was a, gr- a great, great question because um, I played baseball, too. and and, uh, and you have a drawer full of dirty socks your mom's embarrassed. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, I'm, you know, I'm growing up a little bit more, you know, turning your uh, hat inside out and whatnot. That's, that's not going to do anything. But I think golf is different because – what is a superstition? You're just, you, you've got some behavior that you're doing the same way, exactly the same every time and hope that, uh, that you win or, or uh, do well because of it. And that's exactly what you need to do in your pre-shot routine. Right. Or before you, before you putt, you need to uh, go through the same routine, kind of like that's a superstition. Interesting. That's, that's, interesting. A, that's a, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Kyle, did you have, because I played baseball too, that was my primary sport, and I still coach today. Mm-hmm. Did you have a problem transitioning from baseball to golf, the swing? Um, I, I think so. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, uh, I quit golf, or I not, didn't quit golf, I quit baseball um, when, when I started getting more seriously into golf. I try, I did I did play both for a couple of years. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm still not sure whether whether um, how big of a difference baseball the baseball swing had on on my golf swing. I don't know. It's that was the first know. thing they told me when I started swinging the golf clubs. Is you play baseball, don't you? And I <laughs> really? said yes. And they said you need to you need to change your swing. Mm-hmm. You know, I played softball, but when I learned to play golf with a pro. They would only, when I learned, my first month, I think, I was only allowed to swing the club with my left hand. Did you guys go through the same drill? No. And so when you swing with your left hand, you gain control and distance from the mat or from the tee. And um, and then your right hand can add the power after. But it, that, for me, it, it, it became a completely different swing because they made me do that, I think. Sure. That actually makes sense, though. Yeah, yeah and I feel like when I get off my game, it's interesting. You know, you kind of have a few bad shots, and the first thing I do is I go and start swinging with one arm. Mm-hmm. And then I get back into that groove, and then I grab it. But my superstition is really I always have a better back nine because I have a couple beers or a drink on the first <laughs> nine. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that back the nine is always so much down better. Down. <laughs> well, I think it's because I relax, right? I overthink things. Just like this is I overthink things too often. You know, and you just kind of get all out here when you should be really 
focused. And I think when you can quiet all the noise around you, whether it's a beer or meditation or routine or whatever, I think you become a better golfer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, and I, I only play, uh, I've only played a couple of best shots uh, a year, the last, last few years, three or four years. And uh, yeah, I just go out and have a, have a great time and, and play, have, you know, play swing pretty good usually just because I'm out with buds. Yeah, it's fun. What are you doing? You're, you're in school. You're in graduate school, Kyle. What do you do otherwise? What, what are you going to do when you grow up, when you get out of school? Uh, so I'll be, hopefully, I would like to be a, a, a professional chemist, get somebody to pay me to, to do chemistry. And then, and so, so I was, when I got here to grad school, I was hoping my boss was going to be a golfer or some, you know, I'd find somebody to, <laughs> to uh, take me golfing around here. Uh, he's not a golfer, though, sadly, but I'm waiting to, to cash in on that skill at some point. Because like you guys were talking about, a lot of, um, uh, what were you saying, uh, people that golf make more money or something? Yeah, 17% mm -hmm. more. So my husband is a chemist, a Ph.D. chemist at Pfizer. No so way. And there, you know, he doesn't golf, believe it or not. I'm always trying to drag him out, but... Um, yeah, he's he works at Pfizer, and they're always you know. So reach out to me when you're ready to make that move. But I know there's a ton of golfers around here. It's crazy. So all his colleagues golf. I'm like, aren't you going to go? He goes, and he has this theory that he's such a perfectionist, uh -huh. and he overanalyzes everything as a chemist anyway. That he would just not. He would just be tortured by the sport. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting him out there, whether he likes it or well, not. Well, who isn't tortured by the, sto by the sport? <laughs> this, this, True. <laughs> get better every time. That's what, like, why can't I just get better every time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to awesome. play more consistently. That's that's my problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, little, a little tricky, but I guess if I want to make seventeen percent more, I better get out there more often, right? That's right. That's right. That's awesome. well, Kyle, where in the world are you? Hmm? I'm in uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. Well, nice and cold, huh? Uh, Detroit, close to Ann Arbor. Um, oh, Detroit. Uh, yeah, I've been in Ann Arbor for a couple of years, loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Where do you go to school? Iowa, and there's a few good, few good golf courses in Iowa, but um, I haven't played too much here in Michigan yet so far. I know there's, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great courses up there too. Mm -hmm. You're from Iowa originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do you want to end up? It's it's looking like probably um, one of the coasts, probably California or, or um, maybe maybe Boston area. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, right? Like all the medical, all these pharmacy companies and everything are. It tends to be like San Francisco or the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I work in the um, kind of the uh, semiconductor computer industry, so Silicon Valley is kind of the hub. Oh, interesting. Um, but where are you guys at? We're, we're in Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, yeah. We're, we're waiting for it to thaw here, just like you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's colder where you are than it is here. No, there's there's no snow on the ground here. It's wild. Wow. I was, well, we, I was just got, in Iowa, and, and uh, they got 10 inches of snow there and drove back here to Detroit, and there's nothing on the ground. It's great. Yeah, we got maybe an inch yesterday. And it's pretty much gone now. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing we've had so so far this winter. So we'll take it. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is um, it, it's kind of cool. Like what we're what where we're going and what we're doing with golf. And I cannot wait for spring because what mm -hmm. you know everything that's been created has been this happy accident. But you'll have to um, send us your information, and we'll make sure that you get a free membership to Network and Golf, Kyle. Yeah, sure. So so. Uh, what is this again? I, I followed both of you guys, so awesome. Networking golf, um, it's got a it's got a few, few key functions, and maybe Kyle. I mean, not Kyle. Kyle probably can't elaborate on it yet, but Colleen can. <laughs> you know what? Basically, we um, sent every week. You get an invitation to golf, and we connect you with people that are industry complementary. And wow. so it's like a giant LinkedIn, but just for golf. So you don't have to know the people to, you know, you don't have to already have your preset network. Let's say, you, let's say you go get a job now in um, at Pfizer or 
you know, in Silicon Valley. If you don't know anybody, but part of what you need to do is network and get to know people and, you know, kind of cast your rod, I guess, so to speak, and meet people. You don't want to be out there by yourself. Well, you can go into our database, click, like, find people that have similar interests that you want to meet, click a button, and invite them to golf, and it's pretty simple and sexy, and and they can easily just say, yeah, this is a great, you know, I'd love to golf with you. Um, yes, this time doesn't work. How about another time? Or, scram, I'm too busy, you know, and it's, it's kind of this really simple, easy way to connect with people on the golf course. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, pretty excited about it. So yeah, that's great. Um, this is like absolutely right up my alley. Wow, I can't believe I just stumbled across you guys. Yeah. So it yeah, was <laughs> yeah. If you have um, send us. How do we do that, Scott? How do we um, send them a free membership? Um, right now, if you go to golfandnetwork.com, so the reverse of the one that's on my screen. Okay. Well, actually, you could go to either one and, and sign up um, right now. I set the other one up today. Uh, just enter your email address there, and as soon as the beta is ready, which should only be a few weeks, uh, middle January, we should be ready to go, and we'll send you the invite. Yeah, that's that's great. I'll, uh, I will do that. I've, I've followed you on Twitter, so I should have um, be able to find it. No, this is great. Yeah, it's it's um, been a lot of fun. It was a happy accident, but it was just about being something for our members of Small Business USA. And before we knew it, it has just really blossomed into something pretty cool. So, yeah. So Small Business USA isn't. Uh, uh, what is that? This is. Um, that's my company that I started, and Scott is a mastermind behind all my marketing and websites and all that stuff. And so we started um, saying, how do we connect people? We, we started in Connecticut, and all of a sudden we had more people outside of Connecticut than in Connecticut. And we're like, you know, it was like, Scott, I need a solution here. I need to figure out how do I connect people that aren't in my geographic area. We came up with networking golf, and we're like, well, we have, you know, we only have like six members down in Charleston, South Carolina, so that's not really enough to invite to golf. They don't all golf, so let's just send something out to Charleston, South Carolina. And before we knew it, we we just created this amazing. It, it's really been a really fun project, and um, we've kind of blown away where we thought we were going to be very early on. So. And this is just in the last year, or. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's Since the of, summer, I think, right? We've really started, yeah, started putting this together. Yeah, started with members in the summer, and before we knew it, we're, we're building a brand new database to house the, the traffic and the expected membership. So it's unbelievable. That's great. So yeah, well, you know, thanks for joining us today. But we'll we'll definitely um, we'll connect with you and get you on there. It'll be fun, and mm -hmm. you have a little studying to do, but you know we need to get out there and have some fun too right yeah, now that's, that's right chemistry is tough <laughs> I, I had a girlfriend in uh i don't know a long time ago she was biology which i'm sure there's some differences but just her, i re just remember her class schedules and workload was insane mm -hmm. so i can only imagine chemistry is probably probably yeah, up there i'm done with done with classes now thankfully so i just get to go into the lab and just um to, uh, try to do as many reactions as I can so they'll let me out sooner. <laughs> now, are you going for your doctorate or yep. your bachelor's? Yep. Yeah, so that's, that's wild that your husband's a, a chemist at Pfizer. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's, I mean, he loves it. You know, the best story that I have with him is it's so funny. It just kind of tells you how the world goes around. So he was doing his postdoc, he did it at University of Michigan. Mm. And, um, he, he wanted to do a postdoc with this professor at MIT. Naturally. Wait, what was that? Naturally, of course. Yeah, I mean, that was like, you know, so he applied and everything, and he got shot down for this postdoc at MIT. And so, lo and behold, last week, who walks in and presents to him at this meeting, but this professor from MIT that turned him down for a postdoc. Mm -hmm. And so he's, you know, he's, there he's like, I'm so conflicted. I'm so like, I have this, I'm so pissed that he didn't accept me for this postdoc. And now 
I, it's now I have control and I get to choose whether or not he's going to come and do something with our company because it's kind of fun how the world works that way. Sure, yeah. And Arbor's not bad either. <laughs> no, no, he's, yeah. He said, uh, my daughter said, you know, he's, you know, he's a lot smarter than you, mom. And I'm like, well, why would you say something like that? She goes, because he's gone to school all those years. <laughs> I said, maybe it just took him longer to get through than me. <laughs> no, he's smarter than me. Yeah, that, that was one reason why I decided to come to grad school is because I started, I got to meet a few of the grad students and learn that they're not, they're not geniuses. They're not that smart. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of dumb people in grad school. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're they're smart. everywhere. PhD. From what I understand, you're very smart to go through your PhD. It's a differentiator out there right now. It's, yeah. yeah, my wife is supposed to go back and get hers too. Hey, that's yeah. yeah in psychology, though, not chemistry. <laughs> She's gonna analyze all of us now. I already know. I already know my analysis. I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> us crazy golfers. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Something fun, like fun. that. Well, great. This was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Nice meeting you, Kyle. Nice to meet you guys. Yes, Kyle, yeah, thanks. thanks. Kyle, we'll be on, uh, I don't think we're coming on Friday, this Friday, though, because New Year's Day, but we'll be on Wednesday nights at 9, Fridays at noon, uh, networking golf. And um, as you've just learned, Kyle, uh, Colleen and I both have our own businesses, and we're on at other times during the day or during the night or whenever. Uh, so we're around. Uh, so hopefully we bump into you again if you Want to pop on again? Feel free. Sounds like you know a little bit about golf, so we, you know, we can always use some expert help in golf. Yeah. And if you want to um, connect with my husband, just send me an email at Colleen at smallbusinessus dot com. Kyle. Okay. And I'll, uh, sometimes it's good to have a guide. Absolutely. I... If you need one, his name is Scott, as well. It's not. So, it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, All right. I'll get out of here. Thanks a lot. I, I subscribed on the website, so we'll awesome. keep in touch. Awesome, Kyle. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. All right, awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Hey, Scott, let's wrap this up, right? Yeah. Yes, so I, as I said earlier, we will be on every Wednesday at 9 p.m. live on Blab. We'll be on every Friday at noon, also live on Blab. This is Eastern time, so you'll have to adjust accordingly if you're somewhere else in the world. Um, I... Colleen, I'll leave it up to you. I'll be around Friday afternoon. Do you want to do a Friday at noon show? New Year's Day? Oh, it's up to you. That looks let like me, a no. Hold on. Let me check my calendar. I was assuming that we didn't have it, Scott. So no, that's I'm, I'm okay with that. Maybe here and check and refer to my calendar. I am okay with that. Yeah, let's let's skip okay. New Year's Day. There's a lot of so football. We'll be back. This is true. We'll be back Wednesday next Wednesday, which is, what, the 6th at, uh, and we have a guest, the 6th at 9 p.m., and our guest is Golf Vacations. I don't remember the exact name of the business, but um, he's, he's going to talk to us about Golf Vacations, so that would be interesting. Great. Yes. Great. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for setting it up. Really cool um, graphics that you have going on here. You know I and, love um, to do graphics. And I think it's worth mentioning, we, you know, there's that golf and network. If you do the reverse, anybody who caught on a little bit earlier and who's watching the replay, golfandnetwork.com, you can sign up for a free membership for a very limited time. So, Yes, limited memberships and limited time. So get over there and hurry up because the beta launches in just a few weeks. Uh, so you don't want to miss out on that. Hurry up, get over there, and uh, join us, and you will not regret it. Year, one year free can't beat that right and we have no. tons of perks tons of uh fun stuff coming your way um so hurry up sign up before it's gone cool beans Alrighty. we're out peace out boy scout later all right bye